Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go cold this morning good god i don't like it but anyway what i want to talk about today and i get this question a whole lot like sent to me in messages comments on videos they're asking this and uh that's one of the things another thing i, I see in groups all the time and we're gonna kind of dive into it because it's like i can answer a few questions at one video I am by no means a lithium battery expert. We'll just put that out there. I'm not an expert on it, uh, but I do have a lot of experience with lithium. I have ran four different cell chemistries in uh, my recent time here as a base head, uh, meaning when I built my first wall, which I've been a base head forever, but I just got back into it in 20. 19 is when I built the blue Jeep and I did build it with lithium guys. Uh, even though I hadn't been in the base scene since 2007, uh, when I got back in it, I did all my research on everything. You know, I did sixth order build, which I had never done before. I'd never done a wall before I did a wall. But one of the things that I did go to, because I just read the comments, I know lithium batteries are way better than you know, your lead acid or AGM, and I jumped on the lithium train. When I jumped on it, I had to build my own battery, and I chose the worst cell possible for DIY, which is the SIMP, whatever they are. They look like tuna pouches, guys, and they have a tab at each end. By far the worst battery I had ever, or lithium cells I'd ever built with. They are hard to build. But I did it, and they are rated around the same uh, voltage-wise, 3.7 volt per cell. That's the same as C-Max. They just don't have as high a C rating as C-Max. And we're not even going to get into C rating in this. We're just getting into lithium. So I built those. I built C-Max. A bunch of C-Max. I've built a lot of C-Max batteries. I helped build... I made Peyton Johnston help build his own C-Max. A lot of you guys know Peyton. You know, I got Peyton to jump over to C-Max... Uh, me and my buddy Billy built the battery for him, but we didn't really, we made him do the majority of the work. Why? I wanted him to understand C-Max. I wanted him to build his own, just so he'd have an understanding of C-Max in general. And I, mean, I think he, he had fun doing it. We got to hang out and everything, which was great. He actually spent the night at my house that night, him and his woman. Cause we, we wound up hanging out cause, uh, it was like the 3rd of July. <laughs> but anyway, uh, right, so I've done with C-Max. I built Yen Long, which uh, I built the real Yen You know, they're all real Yen Long. It's just excess power. They just want to put their own heat shrink on it and call it an excess power cell. It's Yen Long, guys. And then Headway. I jumped on Headway because they are a very cheap cell and... You know, I wound up buying one of the Super Beast modules. I got videos on here, two different ones on the headway, if you want to check them out. Now, that is my experience with lithium. Uh, I've built, like I said, four different chemistries of it. They've all done really well. They've all got their place. Uh, I'll put them in order, guys. Um, I'd say the weakest out of the four are by far the headway. Still way better than like AGM any day of the week. They're better. Uh, three times as good probably. Then next on the list, I'm going to put the, the pouches. The pouches are great, guys. They, they have a lot of reserve. They did great. Uh, very little voltage drop, but they're a pain in the butt to build. The easiest out of all of them to build would be the Headway and Yinlong. Probably the Headway because there's only 4S, you know, 4 cells per bank uh then i'm gonna go up to the uh yinlong they're great very very strong cells for being big cells like 40 amp hour you know they're they are big and they they are powerful 
I have ran one cell down to millivolt because I didn't have a balancer on it. And the bank started acting up. Ran it down, like, some of the cell, one of the cells is over three volt, which is overcharged. Or, well, not really. But anyway, I kind of overcharged. One cell was only reading millivolt. I put that one cell on charge by itself. And it, it come right back. I have tested it. Let it sit for months. It's right there where it should be. Put a balancer on the bank, and I've been testing, and they're all doing perfect. So, and then top of the food chain, I'm going to put C-Max. Is C-Max the best? I don't know. Out of everything I use, C-Max is the best. Also, not, I'm not going to say it's difficult to build, but you got to have good compression. Know what you're doing. The bars are kind of expensive. When the headway and the end long, I just made my own bars out of, you know, aluminum plate. Now... Let's get into the questions that I've had happen a lot. When it's cold and I start my car, my voltage shoots higher than it should be. Well, if you're running C-Max, Yenlong, whatever, you're not really going to have an issue. Most of us that have C-Max charge around the 16-volt mark, you know, 15.8162 is very, very common. Very few people go to 16.5. But this morning, driving this Jeep, it has a headway bank in it. Headway, the max you want to take it ever is 14.8. Absolutely the max. And this morning, I get in the Jeep. This thing normally charges around 14.4. I got a 320 alternator on it. I look down. I'm charging at 14.6. And now, I'm not tripping because, you know, 14.8 is max. But a lot of you guys run really close to that 14.8 mark on your headway and in the morning when it's cold because right now it's cold out when it's cold you might actually be over the 14.8 mark i've had one guy tell me in the mornings when it's cool when he starts his car his headway banks at 15. well there's a variable there i keep my voltmeters on the bank i use a relay for you know that comes that connects with the ignition turn on and it is, it's reading directly on the bank. A lot of you guys have them little dials that adjust your voltage or your voltmeter's factory or whatever, or it's connected to wiring in the dash. You're not going to get a real accurate reading. You need to be connected directly to the battery bank first. But uh, my wife's Edge, it has one of them volt turn up knobs. And I have a voltmeter on it, and I have one in the dash that I put there that tells me directly where the bank's at. And like this morning, she's like, the car's charging at 16.3. I said, baby, where's the bank at? It's at 16. We're golden. It's got a C-Max in it. So that's a variable. You need to, to see where exactly your voltmeter's connected to get a proper reading. Because she was charging at 16.3 because that little volt turn-up knob connects to the alternator. It's getting a reading there. But the gauge and the dash is on the actual battery, and it was three-tenths lower. Now, is it ideal if your bank, your battery meter was connected to your headway and you're charging it, your bank's at 15? That's not great, guys. That's actually overcharging. I would try to dial back whatever if you can. But, but, there's a big but there. Yeah, it ain't great for the sales, but it's going to drop. When I was driving this Jeep, I was charging at 16. I pulled into work. I was down to 14.4 because the alternator got warmed up. I ain't going to say it's hot because it's like 30 degrees out. But it definitely warmed up and the it started, you know, when things heat up, they become less efficient. Alternator, same way. So when I pull into work, I'm down to 14.3. And that's connected to the bank and back. So, yeah, a lot of you guys, you know, your voltage is going to be higher when you first start your car on cold mornings. I wouldn't be too alarmed if it's only two tenths over max charge. Like I said, you know, headway is 14.8. The Yenlong cells, I've seen guys take them up to 16. I'm going to put them back in the wife's car. But when the wife's edge had the Yenlong in it, we only charged around 15.2. That's where I wanted to be. And then you got a lot of headroom to go toward that 16 volt point from there. So that answers one of the questions I get a lot is like, I'm charging higher when I first start my car when it's warm. 
Now, second thing, I get this question more than anything about lithium. Lithium in cold weather. Is it okay to leave my C-Max in my car for the winter? Uh, if you're going to drive that thing often, I drive my, my vehicles year-round down here, and it don't get too cold down here. It will get in the teens occasionally. I don't worry. I've never had my lithium not start my car in the mornings. I've never really noticed a big, substantial voltage drop overnight in a car with lithium. I noticed more of a drop when I let my car sit for a week <clears throat> with all my amplifiers connected because there's a constant draw at that point. Big amplifiers like, you know, your 5Ks and bigger, they got a lot of capacitors in them and capacitors are always like bleeding off and re-pulling, bleeding off and re-pulling. And that's why guys are like, oh, the tar amps have a terrible parasitic draw. I've got Korean amps in the car now, and they got a, the same pair, you know, parasitic draw that uh, I have only seen with the tar amps. It's the same. Just big amps are going to draw power from the caps in them. Now, I've had no problem with lithium in wintertime, but my experience is the temperature in the teens. I've never experienced temperatures like sub zero with lithium. I would imagine it's going to do just as good. You know, I don't think there would be a problem with it. Uh, so for you guys like asking about winter, if you drive your vehicle pretty often, leave the lithium in there. Uh, I don't see a reason to take it out. If you're going to let your vehicle set for extended periods of time with any battery, especially, you know, lithium, but any battery, unhook your amps. Uh, pull the fuses to them if, if you're running fuses. I'm team no fuse, so it's harder. I'd have to actually get back there and unbolt all of my grounds from the battery to my amplifiers. But if I was going to store my vehicle for months, yeah, I would definitely do that. And I would put, you know, I'd go out like every couple weeks with a motometer, check the battery. Where's my voltage? Is it low? If it is, hook up my little power supply to charge it back up for a few hours, you know. But I hope this answered questions. You know, yes, you can have your lithium batteries in your car in wintertime. Uh, this morning, this little headway bank, I only got 48 amp hour in here. It started this Jeep perfectly fine with uh, with the teens. I think it did dip down in the low 30s last night. No problem at all. The Yinlong did great in the edge over winter. I've been running C-Max for a few years in the Jeep. It's done great. And the Blazer. You know, I built C-Max put in there. When I had the uh, pouch cells, they did fine over winter. So that's the two most common questions I get about lithium is winter time, cold temps. I don't know who started that rumor, but it's just that. It's a rumor, guys. Lithium, the cold weather don't affect it a whole lot. I don't, I think it would affect an AGM or a lead acid battery even more uh, than lithium chemistry. And you're overcharging. Yeah, I wouldn't worry a whole lot about a couple tents, you know. Uh, it ain't going to plague a lot. And your voltage is going to go right back down once your alternator gets good and warm anyway. Which it's like a 30-minute drive for me to get to work. And mine started high. It dipped off. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. If it gets too high, bump your radio. <laughs> Them amplifiers sucking power is going to, you know, drop your voltage in anyway. But, uh, or you guys, you know, you might not be in the car audio and you just wanted to watch this video to learn more about lithium chemistry because there are a lot of direct application lithium batteries that go under the hood of your vehicle. I'd say go for it, guys. You know, a lot of Jeepers, they want to run the lithium and other people. And you might be curious about the lithium chemistry and the battery overall go for it all day it's a hundred times better than lead acid or agm and every application i could think of weight savings power capacity uh power reserve everything's going to be better with lithium and for you car audio guys wanting it to you know cut your teeth on lithium you ain't got a whole lot of money batteryhookup.com they sell headway cells for five bucks a piece. Now do the math on it, you know, because you're going to need four of them off the top to get eight amp hour. 
I wouldn't run no less than 48. So that's six cells times four. You need 24 of them. That's only a little over a hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, go ahead and drop a couple hundred bucks, buy the headway, buy you some headway bars if you don't want to make your own out of aluminum plate and go for it. Just my, my biggest thing I can tell you is put a balancer on them. Get a battery balancer. A battery balancer is 30 bucks, guys, on Amazon. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I hope this helps somebody out there. Leave a comment. You got questions or whatever. I try my best to read comments. But anyway, guys, peace out. And as always, basically.